Hey, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning, Professor. Good morning, good morning Professor. Good morning, good morning Professor. Morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. All righty. So I see uh, like five people in the collaborate. I I just confirmed, you know, uh, a while ago that uh, I have four people in the. Let's see. Yeah, it's still four people in the uh, in today's forum. So if you haven't signed into today's forum, please don't forget to do it ASAP. Uh, please remember, this is your uh, only physical proof of attendance, right? If you don't sign into that, I wouldn't know, right? It's not like, you know, uh, I can, I have photographic memory and just, you know, uh, uh, I can't, it's not like I can remember uh, the names of the people in the uh, collaborate session. Okay. Uh, so it's your responsibility. Okay. So um, <clears throat> uh, in our last class, uh, we basically, you know, um, uh, discussed, you know, um, uh, what amortization is, and you know uh, how uh, it uh, shows you know decaying pattern in the uh, uh, principal balance, and you know uh, what's the difference between uh, exponential function or exploding pattern, and what's you know uh, a decaying pattern, you know. Uh, it's so very we're gonna, hard to hear you. Uh, all right. Uh, let me. Uh, I don't know why. Um, it looks like my connection is good. Can you hear me? Who has? Yes, it's better now. No, it's I, better now. It's not connection. It uh, your volume. I think it was. Um, down. Yeah, pro check your check your audio volume because um, you see you need to make your this is my microphone volume or audio volume actually audio so this is you know uh, how I hear you this is how well I can hear you make sure you have your audio volume set at the right level. Now, so today uh, we're gonna uh, go straight to the uh, example, amortization example. So let's go to, uh, so uh, you need, um, I believe, you know, uh, you have this file open, right? The minute we start the class, you need to have the Excel file all open, right? And um, I don't need a whiteboard right now, but let me just uh, get it ready. So if you go to row 23, this is, uh, you know, this is our example of car financing, right? We did this before. Um, and we found the correct payment. We found the correct payment, correct monthly payment. So we're gonna build amortization schedule. Uh, I want you to, uh, uh, it's not necessary, but you know, um, what's an amortization schedule? Uh, am uh, amortization schedule shows uh, how your monthly payment breaks down into interest and principal, and then it shows principal balance. So you will see, uh, you know, um, uh, after each month, at the end of each month, uh, what will be your principal balance after uh, making those payments? And our example is basically five year, five-year model, right? Uh, 
So there will be uh, uh, 60 payments because there are 60 months. So basically I will first put the payment number. But when I put the payment number, so it's going to be you know, uh, number one through 60. Um, then if you think you, know, uh, you would have to manually input you know, uh, numbers one through 60, um, then, then you know, uh, um, you're wrong. I mean, you, know, uh, you can do that, but you know, that's going to be a very tedious job, right? It's not impossible, but it's going to be a very tedious job. Um, it's going to be very, very you know, um, unpleasant to do a tedious job. So what you uh, what you are, what you want to do is actually you know um, um, serial number generation right and to do that uh, I will just enter one two three in other words this is like planting uh, the initial seeds right first initial seed right the first few initial seeds and then from that Excel already understands that. Excel is so smart, you know, Excel is smarter than you think. It understands your intention because if you uh, enter like, you know, integers, like one, two, three, Excel understands, oh, it, it's going to be a series of, a series of integers, right? Well, you know, of course they are integers, so they are, you know, um, uh, one apart from each other. And then you um, high, uh, select those cells bring it to uh, bring the cursor to the uh, the uh, lower right corner and you drag it down and as you drag down you see a small box appear to the right and in that box is the row number so you drag it down until you see 60 appear there and then you stop and then the uh, uh, the series is automatically uh, number series is automatically generated and then next we need to put the payment there so the payment is always you know um, payment is this uh, i'm sorry that right payment is this and you're gonna lock it right function key ah, yeah, yeah, what's going on Function key F3, right? You got to put, you know, uh, to lock it, F4, I'm sorry. Function key F4, right? And this is important because if you don't do this, think about it. If it is not locked, right? If the, the cell is not locked, then as you drag it down, uh, the next one will be A24, A25, A26. And that's, you don't want that to happen. So you lock it, and then you drag it down. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so make sure everyone locks it, uh, point to A23 and lock that, because uh, some students, I've noticed, in the past that some students enter this number manually. No, you don't enter it manually. If you enter it manually, uh, you're not gonna end up with the uh, correct balance. Don't ever, you know, um, uh, you know, if you ever come up with the uh, uh, anything different then it's because you are entering this manually. Now next, um, so then we need to figure out how much of this monthly payment is interest and principal. Okay, so in the first month, of course, every month, the interest rate is this. Isn't that right? Every month. And since I'm, uh, it's going to repeat every month, I'm going to lock it too. We'll need to lock it because otherwise, when you drag it down, it's not going to be E23 anymore, right? You lock it. And uh, what is the principal balance? In other words, you pay you pay interest on the principal balance, isn't that right? You pay interest on the principal balance. 
Um, but at time zero, what's the principal balance at time zero? Anybody? In other words, what's the principal that we face at time zero? zero. It's, the, it's the payment itself. Payment itself? You mean this is the, uh, uh, this is the uh, principal balance? Yes. No, no, no. What is principal? Principal is the money you borrowed. Isn't that right? This is the money you borrowed. Payment is the money you borrowed. Hmm? No. So what is the what is the money you borrowed? I mean, think about it. Did, did you forget already? Have you forgotten everything already? We are talking about the uh, car financing example, right? And in that car financing example, you borrowed money. I mean, uh, what was the scenario? You're buying a uh, $30,000 car, but you made, you know, 20% down payment and then finance the rest. So the principal you borrowed is what then? 24,000. Yes. And where do you see that 24,000? So the down payment is 6,000. So mm -hmm. we need, uh, we have, we need a 24,000 to cover the Yes, payment. yes. So where do you see the 24,000? Yes. Where do you see that? It's, it's previous present value annuity. Present value of it. Yeah, 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 you're right. But then where is it? It has uh, a we, cell number. We, oh, cell number is G23. Yes, of course. Yes, of course. Okay, all righty, uh, Samira. So um, um, you got uh, your, I'm giving you 0 0.5 for, for that. Oops. So today is 0407, and this is FNB 111.01. Samira, okay, uh, I'm giving you 0 0.5. Um, yeah, the principal, the principal you're facing at time zero is 24K. That's the uh, principal. And there you go. Oops, what happened? Uh, E23. Oh, 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 what happened here? Okay. So that's the uh, interest. If this is the interest, what's the principal? What's the principal pay? Hmm? Think about it. It's this is the monthly payment. It's minus out of 120. This, yeah, minus this. Okay. Logically, that's you know uh, what the principal paid is. Okay. Alrighty, Samira, um, uh, giving you another uh, 0 0.5. And that's the. Uh, uh, so uh, what did I tell you? Amortization schedule shows you the breakdown of the payment into interest and principal, right? And there you go. And what's the principal balance then? What should be the principal balance? Hmm? After making this payment. It's 24,000 minus mm -hmm. uh, principal mm -hmm. paid. Yes, you're right, you're right. Okay, there you go. Ah. This is not percentage. This is crazy. Uh, something's not right there. I'll just put dollar dollars there. Yes. So uh, you 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 got another zero point five Samira. Huh? So um, that's the first month, right? And so uh, we're gonna normally if this is if this is um, impeccable. I mean, if there's nothing to change, then we would just drag it down all the way. But you know, uh, we need to make some adjustment. So I'll just drag it down to the second month. In the second month, look, uh, it's the same formula, but then what is that pointing to? G24. And what's G24? G24 is not showing here. 
because you know there's a reason uh, there is nothing in G G24, and you may have noticed that something's wrong with the uh, row numbers. Why? Uh, there is no um, row numbers 24 through 26 is completely missing. Why? Well, it's there, but I collapsed. I collapsed those rows, and the reason I did that uh, is because there is nothing there. But you know. Um, it's just you know uh, uh, taking up space there, right? It's just intervening between the uh, uh, the amortization schedule and the payment uh, the solution model payment model that we need. So I collapse those, and actually you know um, uh, if you increase that twenty. Right? There were some other examples, but there's nothing in G24, G25, nothing there. Right? So there's no reason for, no need for keeping it there. Um, and then think about it. Uh, so this is pointing to the wrong cell. But think about it. At the beginning of the second month, right? At the beginning of the second month, what is the principal balance? What's the principle you are facing at the beginning of second month? Anyone? Professor, can you repeat the question? Sorry. At the beginning of the second month, at the beginning, at time two, at the beginning of time two, what is the principal balance you are facing? What is the uh, principal balance you're looking at? Twenty-three thousand sixty-five. Yes, yes, yes. That's right. Logically, that's the uh, principal balance at the beginning of the uh, time two, isn't that right? So we make that adjustment. And here, nothing to uh, change because logically that's correct. And then something's not right here, of course. Now, principal balance at the end of the second month will go down from this not from g24 isn't it right principal previous now in second month principal balance is this e29 right not g24 and it will go down by as much as principal paid and it enter and there you go now it's it's walk you know it, it's really walk through the park it's just you know uh, you're home free all you need to do is Highlight those three cells and just drag it down all the way. Okay. So if you drag it down all the way down there, you will see what? Uh, what is, uh, so uh, this is this is what? Principal balance, right? So here, I want you to... Uh, uh, Go to view, select this cell, which is B29, select that cell and go to view and click freeze panes. If you do that, then uh, as you scroll down, you won't lose the label, right? You won't lose the labels. And when you even, you know, uh, scroll to the right, you won't lose the, uh, 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 the label in the uh, column A. So here, <clears throat> Think about it. By the end of the uh, by the end of the last month, by the end of time sixty, right? The principal balance must be zero. Isn't that right? It should be zero, because um, you have paid off everything, right? And then, uh, what uh, in row in row eighty nine? I already entered auto sum formula, right, sum. Now think about it, this is the, the column D is the uh, principal paid, column D is the principal paid. So sum of all the principal paid must be equal to 24K, right? Do you have 24K there? Hmm? Check your work. 
Do you have zero for the principal balance there? Check your work. And this is the sum of all the interest paid. Sum of all the interest paid. It should be like this. Then think about it. Sum of all the payments. I found the sum already by you know uh, the sum command for that column. But then by definition, sum of all the payments must be equal to this plus this. Isn't that right? Sum of principal paid plus sum of interest paid must be equal to sum of all the payments. And it's exactly the same, right? They add up, right? They add up, right? It's exactly the same. So uh, that means our schedule is complete and correct, and it's impeccable. OK, now you might have some of you might have encountered this type of problem in the midterm. Right. And you might you might uh, say, oh, had I only, you know, uh, if I had only studied this. Look, it was already provided main lecture. All the main lectures were the main lectures already covered this. Right? By the main lecture, we are already into a. Uh, by the main lecture, we are already into the bond valuation. Okay. How many people are there? Let's, uh, just eight people? This is <laughs> that's crazy. By the main lecture, think about it. Huh? This is something that was made available to you that you should have studied already. Right? And the collaborate is only a review. It's a review and reflection. This was already done. Uh, right? These videos last available on March 30th. So you should have watched them already and studied already. And um, we are already, you know, um, into topic four. OK? Currently, you know, um, so everything in topic four is already, you know, uh, made available. But you must be caught up all the way to this point. Okay, you must be caught up all the way uh, to this point, right? To this by now. So, um, Let's see, uh, nobody's answering. Uh, so how many people are here? Uh, seven, right? Um, so everyone, uh, did you get the same result? Hmm? Yeah. Okay, only one person. How about the others? Hmm? Eric, you got the same result? Yep. Eric, okay, Jalen, you got the same result, right? Yeah, I just have to scroll down. Okay, and make sure, uh, no, you got the same result. Brianna, Brianna, did you get the same result? Reynold, Reynold? Yeah, I got the same thing. Okay, great, great. Reynold, uh, Saurav, okay, Saurav, you got the same result, Saurav? Zachariah, Zachariah. Are you there, Zechariah? All righty. I'll uh, I'll have to assume that you know two people are not uh, here, right? Um, so that that's it. That wraps up, you know, uh, everything about the uh, uh, time value of money, right? Of course, there are uh, there's a couple of things left, you know. Um, uh, by uh, APY or EAR, uh, but that's something you already know. Uh, effective annual interest rate or APY. Um, so um, this is something we did before to, uh, okay, if you double click on all of those, if you double click, uh, uh, you will find the uh, collapsed columns, right? Previously, you know, uh, uh, right after column D, 
uh, it was column I, but that was to uh, uh, that was to um, illustrate. Uh, that was to do the uh, exercise to understand what um, Euler's number is. But here, if you um, If you double click on the borderline, it's going to uh, expand the collapsed cells or collapsed columns. So here, um, this is basically, you know, uh, you already understand this concept. Um, the higher the compounding frequency, the greater the future value. And we know why. Um, so you can try that out. It's not a difficult thing. Future value, we know it's basically, you know, uh, Principal times one plus r to n. So when m is one, there is no difference between uh, APR and APY. But the rest of them, uh, you just uh, scroll down, and we find you know uh, 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 that the future values are greater. Uh, what is APY? APY is nothing but simply you know. Um, it's effective interest rate. It's called effective interest rate. Uh, doing this, right? APY, annual percentage yield, right? The difference between interest rate and yield is that yield is, I've been telling you over and over, uh, like uh, uh, always, you know, we go back to the house value example and remember there is scenario one and scenario two. And in scenario two, the return is different from the growth rate because return in, uh, includes also the uh, additional cash flow, right? Uh, like rental income. So uh, there will be a difference between just the interest rate and the uh, yield, right? So then, you know, uh, 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 what is, you know, so how do we find that? It's, you know, just like, you know, um, uh, what we did here. Uh, one plus APY, uh, APR divided by M, which is what? Uh, APR divided by M. And then you'll get this, right? The result of, you know, division. And then you raise it to M. And then uh, minus one, I'm sorry. Then minus one. Uh, then, as I said, there is no difference when compounding frequency is one, but as you drag it down, right? Right. Uh, as the compounding frequency increases, right, we'll have uh, we'll have you know um, different APY. Okay, so what if the compounding frequency is infinity? Okay, of course, then you know, uh, n will be also infinity. Okay, and the effective rate. Um, Uh, there, there's no uh, expression for this. Um, probably the only way I can uh, do it is e raised to r. E raised to r. Right. And this is what you do. Uh, future value. Principal times um, exponential. That's E, right? That's Euler's number. Exponential function. Um, raised to R. You put R there. R. 
okay? And then uh, times five, because it's five years, R times T, right? Times five. that's the future value uh, it's almost you know uh, you might wonder um, since compounding uh, frequency you know since you know 10,000 right compounding frequency being 10,000 uh, they must they are all the same no no actually you know uh, it's because I'm using only uh, two decimal places, but if I use, you know, increase decimal, okay, if I increase decimal, you see the difference? Actually, it looks like, um, almost looks like, um, how many zeros are these, you know, two, four, six, eight, eight zeros are like what? Uh, nine zeros are one billion, eight zeros are hundred million. I mean, hundred million from hundred million, it's actually greater than, uh, with hundred million, it's actually greater than uh, the Euler's number, right? It's actually greater than the inf what infinity can give you. That's, that's sort of <laughs> weird, but um, that means, you know, um, Again, uh, infinity doesn't, doesn't necessarily make it uh, uh, infinitely large, right? Uh, actually, it's got a limit. It's got a limit, right? So pretty much, you know, uh, uh, the limit is, you know, uh, found somewhere around, you know, uh, of course, you know, uh, uh, 2.7 on 8281, 828. Now, this, something that is weird is that, uh, uh, it's the same anyway, so. Uh, and the APY, uh, when it is, you know, uh, uh, we know that. Exponential. It's just um, something not right. Uh, minus. So, oops. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There was percentage. I uh, I completely forgot about the percentage, right? I completely forgot about the uh, percentage. So um, it's not it's not one. One is one hundred percent. I I don't know why I put one there. Right. Again, um, so there is hardly any difference, you know, after uh, M being, you know, uh, 10,000, right? The difference is all below, uh, below, you know, three decimal places, right? So this is, you know, uh, what... Uh, APY or EAR, uh, effective, okay, so what should I, 
uh, APY or EAR, effective annual rate. Uh, let me wrap it up like this, APY or wrap. Okay, um, and um, so that is the uh, what they call effective interest rate. And when you uh, you will see this often when you buy a CD, because when they say CD interest rate is uh, when they say CD interest rate is one point five percent, and then next to next to that. There is a uh, in fine print that says uh, APY 1.7 something, 1.6 something. And then what is that? That is, you know, um, effective interest rate, right? That is, you know, effective annual rate. So what, the, uh, in, in other words, what that means is uh, if you want to reach this one, uh, if you want to reach this future value, and with uh, annual compounding, it's just six percent. Six percent will take you there. But if you want to arrive at this by annual compounding, then this this rate is the rate that will take you to this by annual compounding. If you want to reach this future value, right? With 6%, it would have to be daily compounding, but by annual compounding, uh, this rate will take you to the same future value. That's what it means. Okay, that's what effective annual rate is about. All right, so that wraps up everything about the uh, time value of money. And from the next class, we're going to go into uh, a, a bond valuation, okay? We're gonna move on to bond valuation next, from the next class. Uh, any questions, any questions so far? No any questions. questions. All righty, Jalen, uh, no questions. How about other people? Hmm? No questions? Did you also uh, work out this file? Uh, this exercise, did you get that? Did you get them all right? Mm -hmm. If you got them all right, uh, uh, you you know, of course, you know, uh, you may be excused. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's not a very nice day today. I mean, it's not a wonderful day, but you know, uh, have a great day, uh, everyone, and uh, I will see you guys next Tuesday. Okay. Take care, Professor. All right, you too. Thank you. All righty. Uh, so stop recording.